To get a wider perspective of this week's political developments, we're joined now by political science professor Anthony Jurgowski. Thanks so much for taking some time to be with us. Thank you, Sarah. So let's start with the border. Americans are increasingly worried about immigration and the situation there, yet Congress hasn't passed major immigration reform in decades. We know the latest bipartisan efforts have failed. How do lawmakers reframe immigration efforts going forward from this? I think it's going to be really tough because I think there are three relevant factors to consider. The first relevant factor is divided party control of government. Democrats have control of the White House. They have a slight majority in the Senate. Meanwhile, Republicans have a slight majority in the House. And that makes legislating very difficult, particular, particularly in these polarized times, particularly due to the political divide. The second key consideration is the very slim majorities in the House of Representatives that I mentioned. Speaker Mike Johnson, the new Republican Speaker of the House, is struggling, just as former Speaker Kevin McCarthy did, with trying to reconcile the demands of the more moderate wing of the Republican Party and the more conservative, the hard right wing of the Republican Party. The third key consideration is election year politics. Election politics are always on the mind of members of Congress. They are always thinking about the next election. They are always pondering the next campaign. But as we get closer to November 2024, election year politics become increasingly relevant, and that can get in the way of deal making. So there's a lot going on in Congress that would tend to make me skeptical that there will be any type of agreement on immigration. The latest Marquette law poll shows Trump and Biden are tied among voters. In the previous poll, Biden had a slim lead, and then Biden falls further behind in a hypothetical matchup with Nikki Haley. And we have the latest headlines surrounding the president's age, a majority of voters in that poll saying they're concerned about it. So at this point, you know, what do you take away from the poll in terms of how Biden and front runner, former President Trump are performing? I take away the idea that both Biden and Trump have clear vulnerabilities. As you mentioned, Biden's main vulnerability is his age and the associated concerns that voters have about his memory, about his ability to carry out the duties of the position. With Donald Trump, it's more his legal issues. It's more the idea that he has behaved corruptly. There are a number of people in that survey. There are a number of people generally who don't like either candidate. And I think that this election could come down to those voters who have a negative opinion of Biden and Trump. The first question is if people who have a negative opinion of both candidates even show up to vote, if they even cast a ballot. And then among those who do vote, who do they go for? If they don't like either candidate, who can they most tolerate? I think that's going to be key to watch as we get closer to election day. And as I said there, former President Donald Trump clear front runner at this point based on the polls, based on performance. Does Nikki Haley have a chance moving forward here in our future elections that we're seeing leading up to November or leading not up to really. the conventions in the summer, I should say? Yeah, no, not really. And I think it is increasingly sinking in for people that we are on track for a Biden-Trump rematch. There had been reasons to maybe wonder if that would happen. Voters were wondering if Biden would really be the candidate for Democrats, given his age. Then on the other side, there are questions swirling about Donald Trump's eligibility for the ballot. The U.S. Supreme Court took that up the, uh, last week. And then there are questions surrounding the legal and criminal proceedings that he might face. Ron DeSantis had some previous positive polling numbers against Donald Trump, but his candidacy collapsed throughout the 2023 campaigning. And so I think it is sinking into voters that after all is said and done, we are probably going to have another rematch. We're probably going to have a rematch between Donald Trump and Joe Biden in 2024. Let's talk state elections now. This past week, leaders in the Senate and Assembly indicated they are willing to take up Governor Tony Evers' proposed legislative maps. What could this mean for the redistricting fight in Wisconsin? I think it means that Republicans' hopes of appealing to the U.S. Supreme Court are a long shot. Republicans don't have a lot of options because the consultants hired by the Wisconsin State Supreme Court to evaluate the proposed maps 
they did not offer favorable assessments of the map provided by the Wisconsin legislative Republicans. And the consultants also did not look favorably on the map provided by the conservative leaning Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. The consultants were much more positive towards the map submitted by Democrats or Democratic leaning groups. Republicans don't have a lot of options right now. They could make a long shot appeal to the US Supreme Court, but things are trending in the Democrats direction. And Republicans might want to short circuit the judicial process by simply agreeing to pass a map that would be uh, a, a map that Governor Tony Evers would be willing to sign into law. So one option is to let the judicial process play out. Another option is to try to come to an agreement with the governor about a set of maps, and we'll see how that plays out. UW Lacrosse political science professor Anthony Tregovsky, thanks so much for being here and lending some expertise to this issue. Thank you, Sarah.